Hey, good morning. Pastor Harvey Beck, Lester Memorial United Methodist Church in Oneonta, Alabama. We're glad you're joining us. Um, this is Wednesday morning, April the 6th, 2022. And we are just a few days away from beginning the week of Holy Week. And uh, we'll have special services all week long. And of course, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. That scripture about Palm Sunday and Jesus riding in on a donkey is found in all four of the Gospels. So I'm going to preach this coming Sunday. The title of the sermon is, Have You Ever Ridden a Donkey to Death? Have You Ever Ridden a Donkey to Death? And so Luke 19 is the passage I'm going to use, 28 through 40, where it talks about Jesus' triumphal entry as he entered into Jerusalem, as he made his way to the cross and to having communion with the disciples and the um, all that went on, all the prophecies that were fulfilled. Well, this prophecy comes directly from Zechariah 9.9, 9, where it specifically says that the king will come riding on a donkey, the colt of a donkey. And so that's exactly what we'll read in Luke 19. So just for a moment, I'll remind you the power of prophecy. In fact, fulfilled prophecy gives us something that we can sink our our teeth into something we can grip on to old clark pope used to call it the bulldog grip of faith so one of the ways that we can have that bulldog grip is because of fulfilled prophecy that's something that god has prophesied a thousand five hundred years beforehand would be fulfilled and uh that gives us something to put our faith into of the authenticity of the word of god that it is god's written word and so um, I want to share with you a book given to me by one of my mentors that I answered the call to preach under, George Creel. He gave me a book by Clarence Larkin called Dispensational Truth. And in it, it pointed this out. So I'm just going to share with you what he wrote. Uh, now, there are were 25 specific predictions made by the Old Testament prophets Barrett bearing on the betrayal, the trial, the death, and the burial of Jesus. These were uttered by different prophets during a period from B.C. 1000 to B.C. 500, yet they were all literally fulfilled, and some of them in particular in a 24-hour period in one person, and that one person being Jesus Christ. According to the law of compound probability, there was one chance in literally billions that all of these predictions would be fulfilled as prophesied of course we know that they were but if one prophet should make several predictions as to some one event you might make the conclusion well then then maybe by coincidence it all happened but keep in mind that there were 109 predictions literally fulfilled in christ's first advent in the flesh Apply that to the compound of probabilities. Again, it's in the in the trillions of how that could be fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, just one person. And again, that's what is so powerful and important about us understanding this most great event that has ever occurred in human history. One that God came at Christmas to become a human being, but then he fulfilled the prophecies and became the sacrificial lamb. And then all the prophecies fulfilled so that's why we celebrate Easter in the way that we do, but the cross and the betrayal and all that went on with it during that week. And so we'll have special services all week long. In fact, it anchors uh, Assembly of God. In fact, many of our preachers, we just met several Church of God, Baptist preachers, different ones around the area. And so we'll have a service next week in the in Aniana. It will be at Anchors. Uh, church here in Aniana at noon. So at 12 o'clock noon, if you're working, you can come and be a part of that. The service will last about 30 minutes. I'm preaching on Wednesday. There's a different preacher each day. And then there'll be lunch served at Anchors Church. And hopefully after you have lunch at 1230-ish, you can get back to work if you want to come for the services. That'll happen every day, Monday through Friday at noon at Anchors Church. Then also this coming uh, Sunday, we're having a special, and I'm about to share this with you, we're having a special celebration. Uh, we call it Resurrection Egg Hunt. And I'm going to show you a picture of what our um, 
minister of our children does, Kathleen King. And we've done this before, but it's a powerful way to reinforce to them the importance of Scripture and the importance of prophecy. So I'm going to just hold this up to you, and I'm going to give you a little trivia. We can get you a copy of this, or you can probably look online and find it, but it's something we've done for several years. We keep reinforcing it to our kids. I kept mine from several years ago, so I have a carton of eggs that has 12 eggs in it, and all the children will end up with one of these. And inside the eggs, there's a lesson about Jesus Christ in the week that he went through. And so what I showed with you, I'll give you a little trivia. I'll give you a little time to answer, but I'm going to give you the answer real quick. But inside each egg, the child will find an egg. Find 12 eggs containing each of the items on the list below and keep them in your resurrection egg carton. If you find an egg containing an item you already have, Put it back down carefully with the items still in it for someone else to find. Once you have found all 12 eggs, then bring them back to the fellowship hall for a prize. Now, we'll have other eggs that will have candy and stuff in it, but this is a great lesson. So the first one is you find a palm leaf. Obviously, the palm leaf is about the prophecy of, of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Number two, three coins. That's the coins that represent the 30 pieces of silver that Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. There's a small piece of washcloth. What do you think that's for? Yeah, in John 13, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. One of them, number four, there's a cracker. There's a little cup, actually a little communion cup. Obviously, that's to help remind the kids that Jesus instituted the Last Supper this last week of his life. Praying hands. What would the praying hands represent? Jesus going in the Mount of Olives and praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. There's a piece of string, which represents a piece of rope that they tied Jesus onto the cross and tied his hands and bound him to the cross. There are three nails. They'll be, you'll open up one of the Easter eggs and they'll find three nails in there. It reminds us of the three nails that Jesus was crucified with. This is a little different, but there is one egg that they'll find that have two dice. Two dice, like you would throw dice. Some of you are already thinking you know what that's for. Because the soldiers, they cast lots for Jesus' clothes. Then there's a toothpick with a red tip on it. Some may be the thorns, but it, actually the toothpick is uh, red on one end. It represents the spear by the soldier that pierced Jesus' side. Then there's a small strip of white cloth that represents the linen cloth that wrapped Jesus' body. The eleventh egg that they'll find has a stone in it. You can imagine that's to represent the large stone that was rolled away. The twelfth egg, it doesn't have anything in it. It's empty, which symbolizes and reminds them that Jesus rose from the dead. The tomb is empty. So maybe you get a chance to find that, share that with your own children, or come and be a part of ours. Uh, we're going to have a resurrection egg hunt this coming Sunday afternoon, April the 10th. I believe it's from 3 to 5. I think I'm telling you that right. Uh, don't let me get in trouble or tell you wrong. That is correct. So hope you can come and be a part of that. My point of sharing all that again is teaching our children about this great event in human history that our God becomes a human and he dies for us and he comes back alive. We hear it over and over again, those of us who are in church, but it's still, I love to preach about it because literally in Jesus Christ, we can have Easter every day of our lives in relationship with him. So hope you'll make plans to be in church somewhere this Sunday on Palm Sunday and then certainly on Easter Sunday morning. And again, come and be a part of our events that will be going on all week long. On Wednesday night at six o'clock next week, our youth will sponsor a prayer walk through the church. Then on Thursday night, we'll have a Monday Thursday service at 6 o'clock. We'll have communion. Come and be a part of that. And then we'll have a Good Friday uh, sharing and it's time of silence and quietness, readings, liturgy about Jesus going to the cross. So that'll be on 6 o'clock in the sanctuary on uh, Friday evening. And then we'll have at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning at Palisades Park. Uh, sunrise service, and then we'll have our regular services at 8.30 and celebration at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary. So come and be a part of all that's going on and remind you that fulfilled prophecy gives us authenticity 
but that we can sink our teeth into the fact that God wrote his word and fulfilled them in his son, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Love you. Have a golden day.